we have one question so far um, from uh, Clarice. Has there been any research suggesting that clinicians are asking such co complex ranking questions? For example, was there any research to motivate uh, the production of these new R packets? Um, there's already an answer from uh, another attending, but what is your, your opinion on that? Um, there is no, like, uh, the, the, I, I'm not aware of, like, a, um, an, a, a, a part of evidence that has uh, has been shown that such questions are indeed uh, uh, are indeed uh, of interest, um, but yes, with some uh, informal communications with clinicians, it has happened that such questions might arise and might be uh, of interest. But I'm also interested to to see what uh, the other person <laughs> answered. So yeah, there was a, an answer from um, uh, Su Sun Liu. I hope I, I pronounced it correctly. Um, she says she's not a psychiatrist, uh, but clinically there are situations where a patient may be um, contradicting for the modification with the highest predicted success because of, uh, for example, comorbidities or other reasons. You need to choose the second or the third medication. So in that case, such an approach would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, there's no other questions so far. Uh, maybe I can ask a question. So in the, um, in the R packets, um, so how do you uh, define, um, do, do you, prov do you give different options about defining um, what you mean that an intervention is better than another. So for example, do you focus on the um, on, uh, on whether there is a statistical significant difference in the relative effects or you provide also other uh, options yes. for the user? Yeah, so let me show here. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, Yes, so these are some of the uh, of the functions that we provide, and these can be either uh, answered with the retain order function or with the bigger CIV. So if we say just that the two treatments, the one is better than the other, then this would be answered with the retain order, and this would be done with yes conventional statistical significance. Whereas with bigger CIV, we would judge the one treatment versus the other, whether it is bigger than uh, the CIV. So, uh, and it is calculated by, um, by, by measuring how many times, like in the resampling that we are doing, how many times the one treatment is better either than the other with the against the null effect or against the other plus the clinical important value. Okay. Um, there's one more question. Assuming a Bayesian NMA, are the details for loading the posterior distribution into the NMA rank included in the documentation? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the the NMA rank uh, is uh, implemented in a frequentist framework. So you cannot choose between frequentist or Bayesian. I just said in the presentation that in uh, in in th yes in uh, in general probabilities of being at its rank can be calculated either in a Bayesian or in a frequentist framework, but NMA rank uh, runs in a frequentist framework. But I guess someone can upload the the treatment effects and the various covariance matrix from yes. uh, a Bayesian NMA, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can upload the treatment effects and the variance covariance matrix from a Bayesian network meta analysis. But in this case, still, what uh, Nathan Pace is asking is not uh, included the um, the details for loading the posterior yeah. distribution because you have done whatever you have done in another uh, software. Um, one more question: Can this be applied to compon component NMA? Um, 
No, this has not been done for component network meta-analysis. I guess one could do it for the combination of treatments. So if it would be, I guess, the regular network meta-analysis. Um, but yes, it could be something that uh, could, uh, can be done in the future to extend it for component network meta-analysis. Okay, so the next question, uh, thanks for a clear presentation. I think it would be useful to use more precise terminology in the frequentist framework, the probability that one treatment is superior to another with respect to some outcome is zero for one and no other value. So I don't think it makes sense to talk about estimating probabilities of superiority under the frequentist framework. This does make sense in the Bayesian framework, but in this case, the probabilities would be posterior probabilities given some priors. Which framework you are using? Yeah, so as I said, the NMA rank is done in a frequentist, uh, in a frequentist framework. And uh, indeed, it's, uh, yes, the, the way, formally the way that we use probabilities are is how probabilities are interpreted in a Bayesian framework. But uh, yes, we are doing. We are using it for for uh, for clearness uh, of uh, of describing the concepts, as is also done. Like for example, uh, when we calculate probability of being best, also in a frequentist framework, or uh, with the p scores uh, values, which are the Sucras equivalent where the, we use also probability statements that A is better uh, than B. But yes, I I get what um, this person says. Um, even in your examples, some of the interventions didn't show statistical significant difference, but in the hierarchy list, they show the higher magnitude of effect size. Is it correct to prioritize these interventions even though the best one doesn't show significant difference and second best show significant difference? Um, yes, yeah, so um, I, I think that it's, it's um, it could even if two treatments are not uh, different in the statistical significance sense, it could be that uh, they have uh, some kind of distinction that is important to our research uh, questions or not. And um, if uh, if we are interested only in the statistical significance, then this could be the criterion for the question to be answered. But this is not necessarily the case. And uh, it it could be um, that something else is is of interest. That's why you allow for different options uh, for the user. Yes. 